How those hat stores stay in business. I, you know, I have many free hats. I wear many free hats. That uh, voice belongs to Mark Cram, former news director here, also a longtime TV25 personality as well. Mr. Cram, good, good morning. Good morning, sirs. Last time I was here, the, the guest kept referring to uh, Admiral Stubblefield as sir, so I thought I'd give all three of you. <laughs> Uh, you're a do today. That's not necessary, Mark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so only the first time. Okay. Uh, yeah, All right. It's, it's yes. like the salute when you yes, come sir. in. It's only that Got one it. time. Got it. After that happened, Bill, who as an admiral is used to being differentiated from everybody else, yeah. said, "Please put an E on the end of mine. Call me sire." And sire. that's <laughs> what we've had to do since. Yeah. Well, the rest of go. us are just sir. Uh, via telephone, Aaron Crawford joins us. Aaron, good morning to you. Good morning. He is the president of the Eastern Panhandle Radio. Uh, Amateur Radio Amateur Club. Radio Club, yeah. And uh, there's an event coming up. Uh, but before we get to your event, uh, give us a description of what it is that the Eastern Panhandle Amateur Radio Club does. Well, we're sort of an informal group, and uh, um, we're just a group of guys that just get together once in a while and try to have fun with radio. Um, there's more, uh, I would say, official groups around that do stuff a lot more frequently and do stuff uh, more formally than we do. Um, but we just like to get together and have fun with radio, and this is one of the events that we do annually. Now, the fun that you uh, have with radio is different than the fun that I have with radio. You, are you doing more ham radio operations? Correct. So it's two, two-way radio um, versus, uh, versus like, one-way or, or broadcast radio. And how many members do you have in the Eastern Panhandle Amateur Radio Club? Um, it, it, it varies, but I, I'd say we have a handful of active members and um, maybe uh, uh, two dozen or so, maybe, um, overall. And, and when it, it's, a, it's a small group, and we get people that kind of come in and out. And when is your event, and when, what, what are you doing at it? The event is the ARRL Field Day, which is actually nationwide and actually worldwide, um, and it's a kind of a hybrid event um, between what amateur radio, some amateur radio folks like to call contesting and also like an emergency preparedness event. And we kind of lean more towards the emergency preparedness side, and it gives us a chance as amateurs to get together, take equipment, combine it, set it up in a emergency power situation, and be able to communicate. And part of the goal of the event is to make as many contacts as you can within a 24-hour period. And the event runs for 24 hours straight. I might mention that uh, the ARRL event has been going on since 1933. Uh, so coming up, uh, well, 91 years worth here. And uh, That's a good run. Uh, ham radio operators certainly have been known to uh, pass messages in uh, emergency situations, natural disasters. Uh, and even to communicate with the military. Well, and also I was going to make uh, that comment, uh, uh, Mark. Uh, on ships on the high sea, before the days of uh, satellite communication, we depended upon the ham operators. We would, once we got a good contact, everybody in the ship's company would come up and be patched into their family. Mm -hmm. From the recreational, from the morale aspect, it meant a great deal. I'm sure, yes. So uh, anyway, the local group they're setting up for 24 hours, and uh, Aaron, I believe uh, this year setting up at uh, at the Blue Ridge Community uh, College. Is, that's correct. That is correct. The main campus in Martinsburg. Is our Rodney the, Rockwell a member? Lot. I What's think that? so. Is our Rodney Rockwell a member of the club? Uh, he 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 is. He's been involved in and out. He's one of the original members of the club. Yeah, I was going to say, because he's got a serious amateur radio setup, man. He, he talks to people that, around the world. That, that he does. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a, he rolls down the road in his vehicle, people think he's a state trooper because oh, yeah. he's got so many antennas. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've nicknamed his vehicle the Porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't been struck by lightning a couple times, Aaron. You know? <laughs> Yeah, hey, he, he, he is, he, he's a good guy, though. How much money does it take to get the equipment necessary to do what you folks do? Um, it can vary. Uh, you can go all out <laughs> crazy, um, and a lot of people will go to other events, which are like flea markets they call ham fest, and they'll find used gear and stuff that way. Um, 
if you're just getting your feet wet in the amateur radio and you want to get on, on the technician level, which is more localized communication through VHF and UHF uh, communications primarily, then you could you could pick up a, a, a handheld radio for probably well under $100 and be able to get on local repeaters and do simplex operations. What's the location of the person you've spoken with on the earth furthest away from you? Um, me individually, um, I live in a townhouse mm. in an HOA, and I have something called a stealth antenna in my attic, which is kind of compromised antenna setup. But I've done a digital mode communication to uh, both Australia and New Zealand, point to point. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. With a, <clears throat> How about with you, a, Mark? Uh, I would say South Africa, Australia, um, Japan, China, mm -hmm. I've uh, communicated with. Yeah. And how do you find each other? As far as you mean on the radio yeah, or I mean, locally? I, some some people said, how do you know locally who's who? But, well, no, no. If To find somebody in South Africa, just okay. who's out there? And... Yeah. Basically, um, ham radio operators have a uh, assigned frequencies, mm -hmm. and uh, certain frequencies are germane to the United States. Others are international. They're, they're coordinated by the International Radio Union. Um, and um, so if you're looking to, to communicate that long distance, you have to take into consideration the, the time of day, the time of year, and... Uh, and where you're hoping to go. And then it depends on radio propagation as far as the sky waves bouncing uh, the signal off the ionosphere. So it is uh, just sheer luck. You spin the dial and tune up and down the frequencies uh, listening for at a certain segment. And uh, each country has a designated call sign. So if you hear a W, a K, or an N, uh, you know it's a United States station. If you hear a VK, you know it's Australia. If you hear ZS, you know it is South Africa. Um, Canada's VE. How about uh, Antarctica? Do they, they usually what happens with Antarctica is uh, they have what they call de expeditions, uh, and a group. Uh, I don't think there's any permanent ones there. There may be with the military. Because some of the there's guys. no countries there. This right. Treat, it's uh, right. international. But, so they take it down and uh, set up temporarily. Sort of like field day is coming up, uh, you know, but it's uh, it's a much bigger undertaking yeah. to go to, to Antarctica and operate. But you hear the call sign. You, you call the individual either on voice, on um, Morse code, or on uh, the digital modes, uh, which Aaron was referring to there, which is basically computer to computer. And um, are able to establish communications. You mentioned Morse code. Do most mm -hmm. operators, ham operators, still use Morse code? Morse code is no longer required by the FCC. However, there are a lot of uh, folks who are, um, uh, what do we want to say, uh, nostalgic. And um, for those of us who learned Morse code and it was a requirement, uh, I was licensed 47 years ago was when I got my license. And uh, so it's, it's a fun uh, mode to, to, to try out and, and keep your uh, skills sharpened up there. Does Morse code have its own language, or is it? Yes, it does. So, for example, there are certain shortcuts that you can use. So if I'm speaking to someone in Japan or in um, Germany or um, in somewhere in South America, and they may not speak any English, and I certainly don't speak those languages, but you can use abbreviations in Morse code that give them a signal report, a basic weather report, name, your location, and so forth, and, and all those abbreviations. There's, there's like pages and pages of those abbreviations. Some of them are used often. Others are very obscure, and it's kind of fun to dig out one of the obscure ones every now and then and throw it out there and see if somebody picks up on it. Now, are there are the airwaves crowded? I mean, is it hard to find a, a during events like Field Day, which is coming up again? It'll start two p.m. on uh, Saturday, June twenty second, and run until two p.m. Um, on uh, Sunday. And uh, some of us go home overnight, but some guys, Aaron, I know, has, has done the, the, the overnight shift there. But during an event like field day, yes, very crowded. And you will hear many, many signals on there. It's 
sometimes hard to find an open space to, to get in and operate. So are there assigned frequencies for this event or no. is it the whole? The, the only assigned frequencies you have are what out, are allocated by the Federal Communications Commission. And depending on the level of your license is how many of those frequencies, that spectrum that you can actually use. And there might, there, there might be certain bands that you're allowed to have the contest on and then others that you are not. That are not. That is correct. Um, but generally speaking, it's on most of the HF, HF fans and, and VHF fans and stuff. They're, they're free game. A HF is anything from basically uh, just above the AM broadcast band up to 30 megahertz. And then VHF is above 30 megahertz. Now, prior to satellite, we always viewed ham operators as a fallback in the event of emergency, in the event of mass communication, whenever we want to get in touch with people. With the advent of satellite, how much does that still applies? Well, the interesting thing is when the Internet goes out and phone service goes out uh, and, and power goes out, uh, ham radio operators are still able to operate this, and that's what they're going to do uh, with this uh, field day operation. They will set up with emergency power, whether that's a generator or even solar cells, things like that. Obviously, uh, satellite communications helps if someone has battery-powered cell um, satellite phones, things like mm -hmm. that. But time and again, even as as recent as you know this year with certain earthquakes uh, during Hurricane Katrina, the the amount of uh, work uh, and communications established by ham radio operators was just phenomenal, and there were a lot of news stories about it. On that note, we are just about out of time. Uh, and uh, Mark and Aaron, again, if you could tell folks uh, how they can get uh, synced up with you guys in your event coming up and how they can learn more about the Eastern Panhandle Amateur Radio Club. Aaron? Yeah, the, uh, we, have a web, we have a website. It's the club's call sign, which is K8EP, uh, Kilo 8, Eastern Panhandle, dot com. So it's K8EP.com. And they can go there. We have information listed on our homepage about the uh, field day event and the time and location, as well as an upcoming testing session we're doing at the same time, um, if anybody would, wants to get licensed so they can find out information about that. And we also have a Facebook page. Uh, just uh, search Facebook for Eastern Panhandle, Eastern Panhandle Amateur Radio Club. And you'll be able to locate us there, too. We have the event listed there as well. And just stop out there on uh, Saturday or Sunday and uh, introduce yourself. Uh, the guys will be glad yep. to see you. Uh, for more information as far as the American Radio Relay League, that's ARRL dot org and that's and at blue ridge where you'll be getting blue, to go. we will be at blue ridge hey thanks for stopping by mark Thank on your you. way to work nice to on my way to work aaron good to talk with Thank you you. Yeah, appreciate you, it. you too sir and uh, mark cram and uh 822 